This video is going to demonstrate kind of a handy way you can use lists to store prefabs in them and then instantiate from them. So it's really not that difficult to set up. I do have a few things already in place. The first thing you would do is you're going to be creating a resources folder in your assets folder. And inside that resources folder, make another folder and you can call it whatever you want. Probably a single word would be good. I called mine targets. And inside of there, you will put the prefabs that you want to access. Now the names really don't matter. Add as many as you'd like to load. And in fact, I'm going to add one more to this list. So I just have, I'm just using primitives for this demonstration. So I'm going to take this cube and put it in here and then I can delete it from my hierarchy. And now that I have my prefabs in my targets folder, which is inside my resources folder, then that's pretty much the setup. Now I do have one other piece of setup. I have a floor just to provide some reference when I'm placing prefabs on the screen. And I do have an empty game object that I have my C sharp script attached to. Now let's take a look at that. So back up to assets. Um, I have a C sharp script created. I just called it add and place. I have nothing really in it yet. So the first thing we're going to do is add a list in the class and outside of start. I'm going to create my list and it will hold game objects. I'll call my list target list. So now in start, I'm going to load those prefabs that are inside the resources targets folder into target list. So if you see, we're creating a new list, it's of type game object, and it's pulling from the resources folder. It's going to load all of the game objects inside the folder called targets, and that will go into my target list. And at that point, we can just access those prefabs by referring to the index of target list. So I could actually just instantiate one of the objects if I'd like by using the index. So I'm going to say instantiate. I'm going to say what the item I would like to instantiate is. And I'm going to say the index that I'd like. Let's say I want item two. And then I give the position. I'll just put it at zero. And in this case, when I run it, it will just take the second item in target list and instantiate it at zero, zero, zero. So let's try that out. Okay, so the second item is a sphere. Now, if you want to access more of these, you can do things like um, randomly pick which item you'd like to appear. Could do that by adding a random number. And I'm just going to say I'm going to go from a range from zero, which is the first number you'd count within a list, to to as many items there are in target list minus one since the count starts at zero. So in this case, then instead of two, I could change that to random prefab. And then every time I start it, it will pick a random prefab from that list and display it. Okay, so this time it's a cylinder. And sometimes it might duplicate because random really only has five choices here, but note it is picking a different one. So another thing that you can do, which could be kind of a neat way to use this is you can loop through to instantiate each object in the list 
and put them at a different random spot. So I'm going to get rid of this actually to demonstrate that. And I'm going to be using a for loop. I'm starting it at zero since the count of a list starts at zero. Let me space that out a little bit better. So, and it'll go to uh, until it reaches a number that's less than target list dot count. So that will keep it within the range. And then what I can do is set a random X and Z position for it to appear. Now I'm just going to keep the Y the same because I don't want them to go up and down. I just want it to be left, right, toward us and farther away. So for instance, I can set up an integer that's random X. And I'm just giving it from negative 10 to 10 since zero is going to be in the middle. And I can do a random Z. And in this case, I'll start at zero and go to 25. And this can depend on how large your area is going to be. So in this case, I want to instantiate target list I want this to be I because it will loop through and I will contain the current item in the list. And then this is where I would adjust where I'd like it to be. Since this is X, Y, and Z, what I can do is substitute this for random X and random Z. And I'm not messing with the rotation, so I'll just leave that as is. And when I run this, it should show all of my prefabs at random positions in the scene. Okay, so this is running it once. Let's stop and run it again. So notice each time it is putting them each at a different random spot. And I have the really the constrain the area it can be in by setting my random X and random Z ranges. So this could be handy. Let's say you're setting up some random targets somebody would hit or random positioning of enemies, things like that. So I just wanted to show you kind of how easy it can be to put your prefabs in a list and then be able to manipulate them from there.